Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Which NVIDIA graphics card should you buy for 1080p gaming at the end of 2017? Six graphics cards compared, starting with the $110 GTX 1050 and going all the way up to the $400 GTX 1070 and a bunch of cards in between. I'll also be looking at how much VRAM do you need? Three gigabytes versus six, two versus four on the 1050 and 1050 Ti, as well as throwing in a used card just for comparison from the previous generation. I will talk about AAA games as well as esports titles. There will be a ton of benchmark charts later in the video and dollar cost per frame per second to give you an idea of relative value of each card at a given price point. Linked in the description below will be Amazon, Newegg, and eBay links for all the cards new and used that we're going to be talking about in the video today. If you found this video helpful and useful, please use those links when you're shopping. It really does help me out. When it comes to brand or card choice, I would like to remind all of my longtime viewers, it does not really matter which card you buy when it comes to a performance point of view. Every GTX 1063 gig card pretty much performs like every other GTX 1063 gig card. The differences are in temperature, noise, whether they have RGB lighting, and of course, price. Buy the brand and buy the configuration that best works for you. But as far as a performance point of view, the numbers you're going to see in the benchmark charts are largely reflective of all the cards on the market today. The first group of cards I want to talk about are the three bottom level cards, the GTX 1050, 1050 Ti, and the GTX 960 used cards. These range between $110 and $150, and these are great for esports and casual gaming titles. League of Legends, World of Tanks, World of Warships, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, Destiny 2, Overwatch, Rainbow Six Siege. All of those games will absolutely play at 1080p, high detail or better, 60 frames per second or better on all of those cards. Now, do you get more performance from the TI versus the non-TI? Yes, you do. And I'll show you that specifically in the benchmark charts. For most people, the real deal is the non-TI card. For about $110, the two gigabyte GTX 1050 is the value for the money option if those are the kind of games you wanna play. These cards will also do a really good job playing older AAA games. Do you wanna, for example, play Battlefield 4 instead of Battlefield 1? Do you wanna play Call of Duty Black Ops 3 rather than the new World War II game? The GTX 1050 and 1050 Ti will play those games just fine, as will the used GTX 960. You don't have to spend $200 to $400 to play any of those games I just mentioned. Another benefit to the 1050 and 1050 Ti, but not necessarily the used 960, is their compatibility with older machines and pre-built OEM systems. Do you have a Dell, HP, Lenovo, uh, an Acer? If you have one of these large tier OEM machines, many of those computers do not come with a PCI Express power connector for a video card. If you buy one of these GTX 1060s or an older 960 and you go to put it in your old Dell Optiplex, for example, you may find that you have to replace the power supply. You can, mind you, most of those machines will accept a replacement power supply, but with a GTX 1050 or 1050 Ti, you don't have to drop them in and they just work without a problem. So if you want an easy, simple, inexpensive upgrade to an older uh, OEM or pre-built machine from a large company, these should be on your short list. But don't let that dissuade you from the GTX 1060s. I have installed them in a number of OEM systems. Many times I've replaced the power supply. You can find power supplies for fairly inexpensive, 20 to $30 will get you one these days that will run these cards just fine. But this is at least an option that doesn't require you doing that. Stepping up from those three cards, we now have the $200 to $260 GTX 1060 twins, 3 gigabyte and 6 gigabytes respectively. These cards are ideally what you want to buy if you're looking for the best value for the money to play modern AAA gaming titles. What do I mean? Battlefield 1, Call of Duty World War 2, Assassin's Creed Origins. Do you want to play Ghost Recon Wildlands and Mass Effect Andromeda? You're going to need one of these cards if you want to do it at 1080p, high detail, 60 frames per second. Now, they're not going to maintain a minimum of 60, and they're not going to play at ultra. If you want ultra or you want a minimum of 60, you'll have to step up to the 1070, which we'll talk about in just a minute. But value for the money, value for your dollar, for those kind of games is going to be found here. It is also worth noting that if you play esports titles, but you want more than 60 frames per second and don't necessarily want to put the details on minimum, these are also worth considering. 
For casual esports gaming, these cards are fine, but if you want 100 to 144 frames per second in, for example, Overwatch, you're going to want to step up to a GTX 1060 rather than a 1050 if you want that level of performance in esports titles. Now, for AAA games, if you want that kind of performance, you got to go way further up the list, but for esports titles, these are great for 100 to 144 or 60 for AAA games. One question that I am asked all the time, is the 6 gigabyte card worth the extra money over the 3 gigabyte card? Great question. First of all, when there is a $60 price difference between these cards, no, in my opinion, it is not. It's about 10% faster, but $60 represents 30% more money. That is not worth it, in my opinion. On the other hand, sometimes you can find deals and sales on the 6 gig card. If you find the 6 gigabyte card for $20 to $30 more, than the three gig card. Would I buy it? Yes, I would. I think 20 to $30 more is what it's worth over the three gig card. Now, when it comes to actual VRAM use, the follow-up question people ask is, but don't some games need more than three gigs of VRAM? I've heard X game or Y game requires four or five gigs of VRAM. Yes, it's true there are games at 1080p at ultra detail preset that do require more than three gigs of VRAM. An easy example is Ghost Recon Wildlands. Ghost Recon Wildlands comfortably uses over 3 gigs of VRAM at 1080p ultra detail. While that sounds like it makes the 6 gig card perfect, I would like to point out Ghost Recon Wildland is not playable at ultra detail on either one of these cards. It isn't even playable on a 1070 at ultra detail. If you want to maintain 60 frames per second at ultra detail in Ghost Recon, you'll need a 1080 Ti. No kidding, a $700 plus dollar graphics card for 1080p gaming. That particular game is a good example of how there's a detail setting in the game that just crushes your graphics card in terms of performance, but does not give a commensurate increase in visual quality. Yes, ultra is a little bit prettier than high, but it cuts your frame rate in half. High detail is the sweet spot between price to performance. The way I look at it, most games, not all, but most games, high detail is what you should play the game on. Ultra detail is what you take screenshots with. It's what they use to advertise the game and use for trailers and whatnot. So in my opinion, Ghost Recon Wildlands, 60 frames per second, high detail preset, the three gigabyte card is where the value for the money is. The extra VRAM is nice, but it doesn't have enough additional performance to actually let you use it in ultra detail in games that need it. Now, the follow-up to that question is what about the future? Future-proofing. In the next year or two, won't there be games that need at high detail preset more than three gigs of VRAM? Yes, absolutely. I'm sure there will be. But the 1060 does not have enough performance to run those games. You're going to find that it turns into the 960, just like it's down here. 18 months, two years from now, you're going to find that these cards end up in the same place that the 960 is. Two years ago, the GTX 960 was a 1080p AAA gaming card. Now it's a 1080p esports gaming card. So if you want more than 18 months to 24 months of use out of your card, that leads us directly to the GTX 1070. The GTX 1070 has 8 gigabytes of VRAM and most importantly, noticeably better performance than either of the GTX 1060s. If you're looking for a graphics card at this point in 2017 for the next three years and you want to play games on it for the next three years, I do think it's worth the extra cost and investment. Now, these are a better deal in terms of per unit performance today, but they will age out in the next 18 months to two years. This is more of a three-year card at this point. At $400, it is more expensive, but hey, pay more, get more. Another value of the GTX 1070 is 1440p gaming. We will not be looking at that in today's video. We will be looking at that in a future video when I compare it to the other high-end options, 1080, 1080 Ti, and Vega cards at that point in time. But this video is all about 1080p. I do consider it to be a really good 1080p card. It lets you kick the detail level up and lets you play games for longer. Do you want to play esports titles such as Overwatch and Destiny 2 with 144 frames per second smooth minimum performance? You may actually want to consider this. As expensive as this is for casual or esports titles such as that, it removes most of the minimum frame rate limitations. These will average 144 frames per second. This will come closer in the minimum department. It won't always quite get there, but it'll get much closer. If you are a competitive gamer, it's something to consider if high frame rates are important to you. 
So far in this video, I've only talked about NVIDIA cards. What about AMD? Now, AMD does make some competitive cards here, and I will do a video dedicated to those here uh, at some point in the future, but let me give you the short version for now. If you're interested in a card down at this level in the $100 to $150 range, the RX 560 is comparable to the GTX 1050 in performance. They trade blows. Sometimes the RX 560 is faster. Sometimes the GTX 1050 is faster. It depends upon the game, plus or minus 10%. If you prefer AMD, if you have a free sync monitor and you'd like to use the adaptive sync technology, by all means, get an RX 560. They're very competitive at this level. Now, the RX 580 is competitive with the GTX 1060. The RX 580 comes in a 4 and an 8 gigabyte version. Everything I said about VRAM over here applies to the 4 and the 8 gig version. If they're close in price, get the 8. Otherwise, just get the 4. It's fine. As far as performance goes, the RX 580 is sometimes up to 10% faster than the 1060 and sometimes 10% slower. Depends upon the game, but in my view, the RX 580 is, like the 560 here, interchangeable with the 1060. Want free seek support? Simply prefer AMD? Get an RX 580. It's a very, very good card. The same thing applies to RX Vega 56, which is very competitive with the GTX 1070 and actually beats it in modern games by a little bit, 10%, give or take. I'll talk about that more in the 1440p video. Well, that's enough of the summary. Let's get on to the various benchmark charts. But before we do, one more friendly reminder, please remember to use the links down in the description below when you're shopping. Those links do support the channel. I spent days putting this video together. I hope it was helpful and useful to you. If it is, use those when shopping. I will be very grateful. Furthermore, if you are able to or want to directly support the channel, Patreon and PayPal links will be down there as well. If you wanna make a direct contribution, everything is appreciated. Thank you very much. On with the benchmarks. The first benchmark is the 3D Mark DirectX 12 benchmarks Time Spy and Time Spy Extreme. These are very demanding tests that really push modern systems to the max. But before we talk about that, let me explain that all of these cards were tested on the exact same system, an i7 8700K 8th generation Coffee Lake overclocked to 5 gigahertz on all six cores, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 megahertz RAM was installed. You can see the legend at the top of the screen detailing the six different cards. You'll notice that the one used card here is the yellow bar, the GTX 962 gigabyte card. For the record, every card here was an EVGA factory overclock card all the way from the bottom to the top. So when it comes to performance, we are comparing as apples to apples as we can get. Time Spy on the left really shows the stair step of performance. This particular test does run at 1440p, and you can see here that it fits really well within the 2 gigabytes of VRAM on the lower end cards. We have 2137 on the bottom, going all the way up to 6689 up at the top. So basically, the 1070 is about three times faster than a 1050. Notice that the GTX 960 is very similar in performance to the 1050 Ti, and notice there is not a large performance difference between the two 1060s, the 3 and the 6 gig card. Yes, the 6 gig is faster, but that's because it has more CUDA cores. Same thing with the 1050 Ti versus the 1050. The 1050 Ti has more CUDA cores. It has actual more compute execution units, which is why it's faster. Stepping up to Time Spy Extreme, this is a 4K test. Needless to say, the cards with 2 gigabytes of VRAM completely fall apart here due to the lack of video memory. Notice the 3 gigabyte 1060 does not, and this is in fact running at 4K. Yes, VRAM is important, but having more beyond what a program or game needs doesn't help. You simply need as much as you need, and in this test, 3 gigs or more is enough. Those tests are DirectX 12. These are DirectX 11, Firestrike, Firestrike Extreme, and Firestrike 4K, 1080p, 1440p, and 4K respectively. Again, except for the 4K test, you can see a very smooth stair step of performance, VRAM being the limit at 4K. Notice that the 1060s are dramatically faster than the 1050s in the older 960, and that the 1070 is a huge jump in performance over the 1060s. That's why I explained earlier in the video that there's basically three groups of cards. You have the three lower end, the two mid range, and the one high end. And yes, there really is a big performance difference between those three groups. 
Looking at just one example, the Fire Strike test, the GTX 1070 is 60% faster than the 3 GB GTX 1060, but it's 100% more money. So from a dollars to performance point of view, the 1060 is a better value for the money. But if you want the raw performance, basically you're paying double the money to get 60% more performance. The last two 3D Mark tests I'm going to show you are Skydiver and Cloudgate. These are much older tests designed for a different generation. These are many years old at this point. The reason I'm including them is to show that if you're playing four, five, six year old games, these cards are way massive overkill, especially at 1080p. You don't need new top end graphics cards to play five year old games just to play the new stuff. Are you interested in virtual reality? That's what VR Mark is for. The orange room on the left is for current systems, the Rift and the Vive. Basically, the GTX 1063 gigabyte is enough to run current games on the current VR systems. It has enough power for that. The blue room on the right is for future VR hardware. None of these cards are powerful enough to run future hardware at acceptable frame rates. Not even a 1080 Ti is fast enough. That's going to take the next generation, but that's what it's for. And that's why I'm collecting the numbers so I can compare the next generation of cards to these in the Blue Room test. Coming back to the Orange Room, Rift and Vive. Do you need a 1070 to play VR games? No, but it will provide a more perfect experience. It lifts the minimums and it just makes the whole thing nicer. So for a budget VR experience, a GTX 1060. For a premium, get a 1070. These three benchmarks are commonly used by a lot of benchmarkers. I've used them before. A lot of other people use them. They're free to download. It provides you with an easy way to compare systems really quickly and for no cost. Heaven and Valley are DirectX 11 and their older tests. Superposition is the new DirectX 12 test. All three are free to download, and you can see here the performance scales very smoothly from card to card. These benchmarks also provide a score in addition to a frame rate. I've provided both so you can compare it either way. And here we come to Assassin's Creed Origins. This is the first time I have used this game in my benchmarking brand new release the fall of 2017. Notice that a 1080p at high detail, a 3 gigabyte GTX 1060 provides over 60 frames per second of average game performance. It doesn't maintain 60 at a minimum, but it at least gets close. The 4 gigabyte 1050 Ti does not. It does 47 average and 28 minimum. That is enough of a drop off in performance that it would not be a pleasant gaming experience. Let me give you an important caveat. Lower the resolution to 720p, lower the detail to medium preset, and the 1050 Ti would in fact be perfectly playable. But then again, so would the GTX 1050. You can lower the resolution in detail. What I'm testing here is what I consider to be the ideal settings. High detail, 1080p. Please note that Assassin's Creed Origin does go up to very high and ultra detail, so I'm two notches down from the top. If you want to play this game at ultra, you'll actually need the 1070 for 1080p. Let me call your attention to the two 1060 cards. 65 frames per second average on the 3 gig, 73 frames per second average on the 6 gig. That is an 11% performance difference. If you pay $260 for a 6 gig versus $200 for the 3 gig, you're paying 30% more money to get 11% more performance. This is why I have said in the past and will continue to say that the 3 gig is a better card. No, even in the latest games in the fall of 2017, you do not need more than 3 gigabytes of VRAM to play 1080p high detail. You do it ultra. However, the 1066 gig doesn't have enough performance to play this at ultra, so it doesn't really matter. You need the 1070. The 6 gigabyte card becomes a good deal when it's within $30 of the 3 gig card, not 60. Now, let's take a look at the 1070. Notice it does not maintain a minimum of 60 frames per second. If you want a rock steady smooth 60 frames per second at high detail, you'll actually need a 1080. Yes, at 1080p resolution. It is not shown here, but I will show it when I do the 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080, 1080 Ti, and Vega test video, which will be very similar to this, but with those cards compared. If you want to do 144 frames per second in Assassin's Creed Origin at 1080p, you need a 1080 Ti, believe it or not, even for 1080p. This chart shows dollar cost per frame per second. Now you can see the prices that I've used up here on the screen. 
adjust the prices in your own calculations if you find them for a different deal. So for example, if you find the 1066 gig card for 230 instead of 260, take 260 and divide it by the frames per second in the previous chart. But these calculations here are all based upon these numbers. As I said earlier in the video, the GTX 1052 gigabyte and the GTX 1063 gigabyte are the two deals among all of these cards. But of course, the 1052 gigabyte doesn't really play this game properly. You need the 1060. So the $200 GTX 1063 gigabyte is the sweet spot for price to performance. Notice that you pay more to get more performance. The GTX 1070 is $4.40 per frame per second, Whereas the GTX 1063 gig card is $3.08 per frame per second. It's a better value for the money. The next game we're going to look at is Ghost Recon Wildlands. We do have a bunch of games here. I'm going to go through them quicker than I did that. The explanation doesn't need to be repeated every time, but I do want to explain at least the first two games in great detail to make it easier to analyze the rest of the chart. Again, we have a very clear stair step of performance. The three bottom level cards are all quite similar. Then you have the two 1060s and then you have the 1070 further ahead. Please note that both 1060s play this game at 60 frames per second, both with an average and a minimum that's pretty consistent, and the 1070 provides a superior experience. Now this is the game's built-in benchmark. These minimums are for that. If you want the minimum in the game to be 60 frames per second, you really will need the 1070. Those 1060s during combat, action, and explosions within the game will fall lower than what you're currently seeing on the screen. I know, I've beaten this game. I even live stream the end of it. It's a whole lot of fun. Can you play this game on the 1050s or the older 960? Yes, you can, but not at high detail. At lower medium detail or lower the resolution. Come down to 720p or 900p, lower the detail to either medium or low depending upon which card you're on, and then you'll get acceptable performance. No, it's not gonna be as pretty. No, it's not going to be as smooth, but it is playable lowering the settings. I do want to make clear that if you set Ghost Recon Wildlands to ultra detail, which is two notches above high, it goes high, very high, and ultra. Does it require more than three gigs of VRAM? Yes, it does. In fact, it can push over four. However, a six gigabyte GTX 1060 at ultra detail is going to run about 30 frames per second at 1080p. So while it has enough VRAM, it doesn't have enough performance. This is also true of the RX 580. Four gig, eight gig doesn't make any difference. Neither one has the performance to do ultra detail at 1080p. Please note, the 1070 doesn't either. A 1080 is going to struggle to do an average of 60 frames per second. You really almost need a 1080 Ti. Ultra is crushing. As I said, high detail for playing the game, ultra detail for screenshots. Again, dollar cost per frame per second. The two cards I want to draw your attention to here are the 3 gigabyte 1060 and the 8 gigabyte 1070. You are paying 25% more per frame per second. It's easy to look at the 1070 and go, man, that's $400 and the 1063 gig is 200, so it's double the money. It is, but it's faster. But what is the relative value of the performance difference? About 25% more expensive per unit of performance, $4 versus $3, I'm rounding a bit, between those two cards. So if you want the superior performance, if you want a minimum of 60 frames per second at high detail in a game like Ghost Recon Wildlands, are you okay to pay 25% more per unit of performance? Now, 25% is a whole lot less than 100%. When you just look at the price of the cards, it's easy to say, man, it's double the money. Is it worth the money? Now, that's a personal choice that you have to decide. But when looked at this way, essentially, you're paying a 25% premium for that performance. Even if you don't need all of a 1070 today, you will grow into that performance. Instead of 18 months to two years on the 1060, I really do think you'll get three years at 1080p at high detail on that 1070. Is it worth it to you? That's a personal choice. As always, pay more, get more, but at least you have some information with which to compare the cards in a different light rather than just total cost or raw frames per second. Now that's a detailed analysis of those two games. I've got seven more game results here, but we're gonna go through these pretty quickly because the story honestly doesn't change much. Here we have Mankind Divided. Again, 60 frames per second, the 1060s are what you need. If you want more performance, it's there. 
Next up, we have Far Cry Primal. This actually runs sort of reasonably well on the older cards, on the 1050, 1050 Ti, and even the GTX 960, which just goes to show that if you're not playing the latest and greatest games, you can often get away with weaker cards. It just depends upon what you want to play. For Honor is a newer game. It's really well optimized. This runs really, really well on modest systems. Now, this is the game's built-in benchmark. I have not actually played this game, so I can't relate its performance to the actual gameplay. I can in things like Ghost Recon Wildlands, which I've actually beaten. It's a good example of how some people will say, oh, I bought a GTX 1050, and it's fine. I'm happy with the performance. And then the next person will say, no way, man. You need a 1060. A 1050 won't do it. Depends upon what you're playing. Next up, Grand Theft Auto V. Still a beautiful game, still widely played, still a lot of fun. Notice that this game plays just fine on the lower priced cards. Grand Theft Auto V is actually far more CPU dependent than it is GPU dependent. And the fact that we've got the best gaming CPU in the world here is really why you see the numbers where they're at. I'm actually thinking about retiring GTA V as a test, at least as far as GPUs go. It's still useful to compare CPUs, higher and lower and older generations. But for graphics cards, this might be the last in the series of tests that I do with it, because as you can see here, there's very little performance difference between these various cards. Rainbow Six Siege is in many ways a crossover title. It's beautiful, but it's really an esports or casual gaming title, even though it's pretty intense and competitive. Notice that you can average nearly 144 frames per second on a 3 gig GTX 1060, but the minimums aren't there. If you want, if you're a competitive online gamer and you want your averages over 100 frames per second, a GTX 1070 is what you'll need. Do you want 144 frames per second minimum? You'll actually need a GTX 1080, but this game is completely playable even on the previous generation 960 or the 1050. Rise of the Tomb Raider is a really interesting game. Will this game play on the GTX 1050 or the older 960? Yes. In fact, in the opening scenes on the mountain, it's incredibly smooth and playable on those cards. When you get into the detailed areas, it falls apart. It's going to be really, really rough in certain portions of the game, but like 80% of the game will be smooth. If you really want to play Rise of the Tomb Raider at high detail at 1080p, I strongly recommend a GTX 1060. It will be a better overall experience throughout the entire game, not just in the opening level. The Division is another really fun game that I've also beaten. It is just an absolute blast. I had way too much fun playing this game and the DLCs as well, especially the Underground. You can absolutely play this game on lower and hardware. It's pretty good at scaling, but please note that the minimum frame rates really fall apart at, at times. If you really want the best experience in this, a 1063 gig, again, is the value for the money option. Do you want superior performance? 1070. Well, there you have it, a whole ton of benchmark results. I hope that is interesting and informative. There's a ton of results there to sift through. In fact, you may want to go back and rewatch the benchmark charts again. You may see something new that you missed the first time around. But the short, short version of it is, from a value for the money point of view, the GTX 1050 non-TI and the 3 gigabyte 1060 are the deals and new cards. But if you can find a GTX 960 for a low enough price, if you can find a bargain, perhaps bid on one, it's also worth considering, even though it's an older card. Want a premium user experience? The 1070 is a valuable card for 1080p premium gaming. Like this video if you like it. Share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments? Put those in the comment section. And as always, links in the video description. Click them, use them. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.